Okay, so let's get started with generating the SVG files. First thing I want to do is remind you that this folder is inside my users folder. That gives me access to it from uh, with FontForge. Otherwise, I won't be able to get to it. So you need to make sure you set it up that way. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open up my Illustrator file in here. And I'm going to save it. And I'll do a save. And I'm going to go to my, I want to be inside my SVG folder. So it just happened to land in the right spot. So remember, inside the uh, the users folder, there's the font forge file. There's the font folder for dots. And then there's the SVG content. So that's where I want to save this. And I'm going to go ahead and call this dots. And I'll save that. And hit OK. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to create a text box with nothing in it or a text line with nothing in it. Doesn't matter where you click, but you want to click somewhere off the uh, artboard. So click in here, and as soon as you click on it, hit a delete. And that's still selected. Okay, so I actually want to save it like this, so I'll go ahead and do a command S for save. And so when I open up the Illustrator file, it'll include that text box and hopefully I'll remember to do this. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to do a command X. And that's so that we can select the right box later. It's a workaround and it's a hack. It took me a little bit of time to figure this out, but this is the way you want to set it up. Okay, so now I want to make my Adobe Illustrator window a little bit smaller so that I can access the desktop. And I'm going to go into my dots and I want to go into my I'll do my numbers first, so I'll do numbers. I'm going to do a right click and do a new tab. And I'll pull the numbers out over here. And this is for the SVG. So it's going to be empty for now. And now I'm going to back away over here and I'm going to go to my JPEGs and I'll go to my numbers and I'll do a new tab for that one. And I'll pull this out and I'll again stack this in order so I can see them. And I'll stack this one in order also. So that way they're all lined up by name. And what this is going to do for me is I'm going to be able to drag this image into Illustrator, run the function, and then over here it's going to populate the, the name. So I'll be able to see which character I'm on. So I'm done in here. And everything looks good. OK, so let's go ahead and collapse this, or rather open this back up. And now I'm ready to start working. And I'll come back in here. So remember, I still have my text inside the clipboard. So that's important to make sure you have that set up that way. OK, so everything looks fine. I want to start my recording. So I'll go to my actions. And I'm going to create a new folder or a new set. And I'm going to call this the FF set for FontForge. Get rid of that number one and hit OK. Now I want to start a new action. Actually, before I start the new action, I want to bring in my artwork. So I almost went too far. So uh, we're going to, we've got the folder. We're now going to come back over here and we're going to grab our first letter or our first glyph and we're going to drop it in. Doesn't matter where it goes, the action is going to take care of the alignment. Okay, so we'll click over here. Now we can start to record. This is going to happen off camera, so to speak, when you drag it in. And then when you hit the record button, it's going to reference whatever it is that you dragged in, and it's going to start doing its thing. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the alignment is set up. And so if your alignment isn't opened up, go ahead and open it up. And then you want to double check and make sure that it's set up to align to artboard. It's got to be set up to that. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start a recording. So we'll go ahead and do a new recording. And we'll call this SVG. And we'll hit record. I forgot to put a function key in it. I'll, I'll, I'll fix that later. I, I just jumped to it a little too fast, but I can come back to it. Okay, so I'll give you a chance. I'll pause. Okay, now you 
presumably you pause it when I pa say pause, and then you can come back and do what I'm going to tell you to do next. OK, so now what I want to do is I want to align it. So it's still recording. All I have to do is click left and click on the bottom. OK, I'll pause and come back, and we're good to go. All right. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to create this into the, the uh, black and white logo type of uh, an outline. So while the image is selected, I'll go, go up here to the image trace, and I'm going to slide down in here, black and white logo. And that makes it into an EPS file, but it's all kind of self-contained. I need to expand that. OK, so go ahead and do that. Pause. OK, now I'm going to expand it. All right, so now I'm going to go to the object drop-down menu, and I'm going to slide down to expand. And I'm going to hit OK, and then I'm going to pause and let you catch up. So hit OK, pause. OK, so now that you're back, we're going to go to the object drop-down menu again, and we want to ungroup this two times. Notice that this says uh, this is grayed out as a group. That means I can't group it because it's already a group, and I need to do this twice. So there's the first ungroup. There's the second ungroup. And then if I look at it, you can see that group now becomes an option, and ungroup is not an option. That means I'm done with this. So don't select anything. I'm going back up in here if you're taking a look. Go ahead and set that up. I'll wait. Pause. OK, so now we're going to go back, uh, and uh, we've got this grouped out. And now what we want to do is paste in place the text that we selected. So I'm doing a Shift-Command-V, and it drops that text box right where I copied it from. Right now, it's on top of everything. And this white box down here is on the very, very bottom. I want to be able to select, use this as a reference to select the next thing up. Now, the reason why this doesn't have anything in it, it can't even have a space in it, is because when we export the, uh, the SVG, the Scalable Vector Graphic, it's an empty text box, so it's just going to ignore it. If you have a space bar, then it'll come along for the ride, so you need to make sure that there was nothing in there. But now that we have it, we want to go to the Object drop-down menu, and we want to arrange it and send it all the way to the back. You can do a Shift-Command. Uh, left bracket, or you call the menu all the way to the back. I'll go ahead and call that. Go ahead and do that. I'll wait. I'm pause. OK, now you can come back. Presumably, you came back. And uh, so now that it's in the way back, I can go to the Select drop-down menu, and I can select Next Above. So I want to select the Next Above. Now that the text box is at the very bottom, Right up above it is that larger white box. And now it selected that, but only the outer white box. It didn't select any of these compounds in here. I want to select everything that's white. So now I'm going to go again back to the Selection drop-down menu. And I'm going to select everything that's the same. And I'll go ahead and save, uh, select that. And then I'll pause and let you catch up. So select that, pause now. OK, so now that it's selected, I can delete this. And everything that's white goes away. Now, that little text box is still in there. Uh, but it's not going to bother me when I save this as an SVG file. So now I'm ready to save this as an SVG file. I'm going to go to the File drop-down menu. And I'm going to call Save As. And I'm going to select SVG down here on the bottom. And I want to save it. I'm working with numbers, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in the Numbers folder. And I'm working with number 1, so I'll just go ahead, or rather, I'm working with 0, so I'll type in 0. And that's what the file is going to be named. I'll go ahead and hit Save. And I'll hit OK. And then over here, it's telling me that it's saved SVG 0. Now, I, I want to get it ready for the next uh, image that I bring in. So I want to do a select all, click everything, and delete it. And I'm going to stop my recording. Now the last thing I have to do is I want to make sure that I have the option to name it when I save it. 
So over here where the Save As is set up, over here on the left-hand side, I'm going to click on this little box in here, and then that'll give me the dialog for the save. And so I'm good to go. Uh, this is saved to my uh, Illustrator file. I don't have to worry about, as long as I'm working on the same Illustrator, I can work with this in here. I didn't give it a function key, so I'll go ahead and do that right now. So I'll click on here, and I'm going to go to the Select Options. So Action Options is what I want. Select that. And here's where I can give it a function key. So I've already got one and two set up for the other Photoshop uh, action scripts. I'll go ahead and do F3, and I'll do a command there as well, and I'll hit OK. All right, so now I'm ready to go. So all I have to do is grab this guy over here, and I'm going to do a command F3 on my keyboard. And it does this thing, and it's, it's giving me the dialog window. I should shut that off, so I'll go ahead and hit OK. It'll finish it up. Okay, so I'm working on number one now. So I'll go ahead and hit return there and return again. And it deletes it, so number one's gone. Now, let me turn this option off so it doesn't keep on asking me what I want to do the expand on. The only one I want on is the save. Okay, so now I'm going to go to number two, drag this over here, and come back over here and do a command F3 and does the whole thing. I'm working on two. Hit return and hit OK. Now the way my my numbering is going backwards, if I want it to line up one to one, I should reverse this out. So there we go. So now I'll come back in here. So now I can see the one to one. Okay. So now I can grab number three, drag this over here, come back over here and play. And that's going to be three. Hit return twice. Grab number four. Play four. Grab number five. You can see that this goes by fairly fast. Okay, so five. Okay, that's good. Six. All that six. Seven. Nice thing about having this numbered, and then you can just check. Uh, the, uh, the files to make sure that everything loaded up okay. Okay, so eight. And nine is next. And it's done, and it goes by really fast. In the next movie, I'll start with the lowercase letters, and I'm going to run into a small little problem, and I'll show you how to fix it. And that is that the default setting right now for the save is going to the Numbers folder. So we'll cover that in the next movie.